So I recently had the good fortune of acquiring one of these Home Assistant Yellow devices. This is the Yellow Standard Edition US version, uh, all, also known as the Home Assistant Yellow, uh, made by Nabucasa. It'll focus there. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna just open it up and see what's in the box and just take a quick look at it. Just a real short video on doing that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the box itself. Uh, powered by Raspberry Pi, Home Assistant Yellow, and I just showed you on the back here. This is uh, the standard US version. And since this was sent to me, uh, it's kind of a surprise. And again, I'm fortunate to be able to uh, have the opportunity like this. So I'm just gonna open it up and we're gonna see what's in here. Uh, and there's the Home Assistant Yellow itself. And we'll look at that here in a second. And then in the box also is an ethernet cable. You can never have too many ethernet cables, really enjoy having extras. And then here's some information on it. Connect the ethernet cable, connect the power cable, download the Home Assistant app, or just go to the browser uh, at that port and away we go. So that's as simple as it is. And let me see what the actual Home Assistant yellow looks like here, get rid of the box. And it comes nicely wrapped in this plastic. And we'll take that off. And I know there's been some discussion on the internet about taking the plastic off. And you almost have to take the plastic off to get to the ports. I don't think there's another layer on top of here. So I guess that's it. That's the plastic on it. Let's look inside a little bit here, or let's turn it over here. Here's the Home Assistant yellow uh, logo and, or the Home Assistant logo on the back and Home Assistant Yellow down here. Let me take this off. I'll take some of these screws out. All right, let's see if it just comes apart. I'm just kind of guessing here. There we go. All right, so there's the inside of it, uh, but here's an M2 expansion slot as it, as it mentions here. Here's your wireless chip. It's got a C CR2032 battery for backup. Uh, this is, sorry, only the PoE version as it shows right here. So this requires a PoE power supply to make it operate. Uh, here's your ERT. Here's the Pi CM4. This is the, what does that say? The world of your smart home. Uh, I don't know what that means. It's kind of cool though. They've got all these things on the board though. I kind of think that's kind of neat. Uh, wireless smart home. It says smart home here again. Plug in an NVMe SSD to boost storage. So if you want to put that in there, I just mentioned that. And what else we have on here? We've got some ports here. Uh, I'm assuming these are reset buttons and or power buttons. We'll have to look and see what that is for. Uh, a couple of USB 2.0 ports. Here is a USB-C. So this is version uh, 1.2 of the board. And then you, if you want more details on the Home Assistant Yellow, you can go to yellow.homeassistant.io. So that is really cool. A nice clear case, and this is a hefty case. I mean, it's really, it's really solid. There's no chimping or no uh, cutting the corners on this one. Um, you can even see inside here. There's a kind of like a, a shell inside this outer case, and then it's got the neat uh, Home Assistant logo stuff on it here. So that is it. That is the device. Um, I'm going to. Oops. I guess the bottom comes off too. So there's the bottom of the case. So this thing is all one board like that. And then of course it comes in this nice custom case. This clear or partially clear case. So I've got this here now. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. And when I do that, we'll fire it up and see what it does when we first boot it up. Okay, so I plugged the power in on this. And one thing I failed to mention is that I actually had a power adapter that came with it in the box. So I just plugged that in. So we do have this non POE version or it doesn't have to be POE powered. And now it's lighting up. You can see the lights going on in the box. And one of the things we have to be able to do is determine what the IP address is. It does say you can go to homeassistant.local, but the homeassistant.local that I have here, since I have another Pi running will not work for this. So I'm going to have to find the IP address. So let's go over to my router and figure out what the IP address is on this new Home Assistant Yellow and see what it is. So I'm going to change this to wired since I've got it plugged in. 
And let's just see, we have our home assistant right here and it's got an IP address of 157 and it's got a gig port on it, which is amazing. So let's go to that IP address. All right, so I'm at the IP address of the new router or the home assistant yellow and we're preparing home assistant. Now from this point on, it looks like everything that goes on with home assistant will work just exactly the way it did before. You'll prepare the home assistant for the first use, and then you'll start adding your apps and your add-ons and everything else you want to use with it. So while we wait for this to do its thing, let's go over and read a little bit about what the Home Assistant Yellow is. It is a crowd supply project. Home Assistant itself is the second most active Python project on GitHub, has over 8,000 contributors last year alone. Um, they introduced the Home Assistant Yellow, which is a plug and play device, ready to use device. It's the easiest way to run Home Assistant and experience the best in the home automation world. Let's make that a little bit bigger for you. Um, the yellow integrates 1,000 different devices and services, and that's true of all Home Assistant instances. Uh, you can create powerful automations, get insight in your energy usage, all from an easy to use interface. It runs 100% locally without anything in the cloud. That's important, especially with some of the local or some of the cloud-based services that have failed over the last few years. Um, so it grows with you. Um, so the yellow, we've created a system that's upgradable. So that's nice. It has gigabit ethernet with an optional PoE, a Zigbee module, which is matter compatible. So this allows you to run matter type devices in the future. So it's future proof there has an M2 expansion slot for an SSD hard drive or something else like an AI accelerator, if you want to. And it has a raspberry Pi compute module four. So it's based on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it talks about the latest Z radio chip from Silicon Labs to communicate with your smart devices. Again, it's forward compatible with your upcoming Matter Smart Home connectivity standard. Uh, it's got that M2 or M.2 expansion port. You can run an MV NVMe SSD to have more space. So here is that right there. Uh, of course, the Home Assistant app runs on iOS and Android, so you can use one app to do everything. With the number of integrations you can get in Home Assistant these days, it really is everything. And you can uh, design these uh, dashboards to fit whatever needs you have. And I have a number of videos on dashboards, uh, so you can look through those. You can use pre-made automation. So uh, with Home Assistant Yellow, everything in your home becomes a data point, can be automated. Uh, so that's all available through Home Assistant. Using an automated advanced or an advanced automation editor, you can create powerful automations or create one from one of the many blueprints that's already out there that the community has built for us. You can troubleshoot your automations here as well. Track and manage energy consumption. That's also available natively within Home Assistant. Uh, you just integrate your energy devices, energy company to that, and you can track it. You have the ability to have power over Ethernet as an option. With a PoE compatible switcher router, you can communicate and power your home with one single cable, which I like because I'm really tired of cords being everywhere. Uh, so here's some specifications. Uh, carrier board for the Pi compute module. CM4 board-to-board -board connector supports direct boot from NVMe. Uh, compatible with all 32 variants of the CM4. Integrated smart home wireless. That's a Zig Zigbee 3.0 open thread and matter support. 2.4 gigahertz radio with 20 dBm uh, capability. So this is your Wi-Fi, uh, flash memory, 96 kilobytes of RAM memory, pre-installed with Zigbee firmware, which is uh, upgradable. That's important because you want to be able to upgrade it in the future. Has an NVMe expansion slot or M2 expansion slot for all of the different options you can put there. Gigabit Ethernet, two USB 2.0 type A slots, one USB C 2.0 device port, uh, high quality stereo audio DAC. So on there, let me just look at that real quick. Is there actually a, is there an audio port? There is. So you could actually plug in a speaker here and see and listen to audio. So what does it say it has on it? It has, um, where's it at? Two volt RMS on out, high quality stereo audio. So I can plug my headphones in and listen to it. And Home Assistant has a, uh, a streaming ability now, a media player that can stream all kinds of different sources. So that's important um, to have that. And now you can listen to it or plug it into a speaker or whatever. Uh, two, bus two push buttons, which is what I was talking about before. We have um, 
the red factory reset button here and we have a blue, it says to be determined. So that one's not configured yet, but they are available uh, for later expansion. And then we have status LEDs, green, red, and yellow. So let me look at those. It's hard to see that on here, but we do have a red one, which is that one right there. And this yellow one uh, is over here to the right and a green one. So green is going to be your power, um, which I think doesn't make sense. To me, it looks like red is your power, green is your disk, and yellow is your home assistant state. So the power wouldn't be flashing, which is this middle one, which they say is the green one. So I think that's a mistake on the uh, the website. Uh, power, 12 volt through barrel DC jack, Ethernet PoE, typical power usage is less than, or about a watt, one and a half watts, or if you put the NVMe, two and a half watts. And then there's your translucent injection molded polycarbonate plastic, tool-free assembly, and by tool-free assembly, they show you that on the bottom of this right here, where you have these little thumb screws. You just unscrew them like I did a minute ago, and you can take the whole thing apart. Love it when there's no tools. So thank you for designing it with no tools. And it accommodates a custom heat sink. Here's the board without the heat sink, and you can't see it in here anymore. But the heat sink is actually on the board in here. Again, you can't see it because of the case. But um, earlier in the video, you could see where it had the heat sink and um, now this is it without the heat sink, the Raspberry Pi board. Um, lots of configuration from storage uh, and NVMe. You can um, provide your own if you want to. And there's a whole bunch of different options here for that. Wireless connectivity. So you can um, use the Zigbee chip to control Zigbee devices. It is thread certified, as I mentioned. Um, let me turn on my mouse highlighter for y'all. Yep. So Z-Wave is an alternative to Zigbee, not compatible with Zigbee. It does not include a Z-Wave radio, and I use a lot of Z-Wave stuff. It is possible to use a Z-Wave USB stick or attach a Pi 7 inside the case. Uh, they talk about why they did not do that on the main board. Um, I think it's space and parts and regulatory approval for the different countries. Z-Wave uses a different frequency in different countries, and so that's a whole other world to have to deal with. It does not have integrated Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, but you can easily install a variant of the Raspberry Pi. So I was wrong earlier. It does not have Wi-Fi. The Zigbee is 2.4 gigahertz, but it does not have Wi-Fi. So you do have to plug this into an Ethernet port. Uh, it has a GPIO, so there is some GPIO on it. You can use that. Um, they don't recommend using GPIO pins with Home Assistant at all using external ESP-based microcontroller. Uh, and you can read about that in detail somewhere else. Uh, it's powered by 12 volts DC, 2 amp power supply with a barrel jack. We opted for barrel jack because many USB power adapters do not supply enough power. It re results in unreliability. The power over Ethernet variant as default configured as an 8023AT. Um, if you require more power, you can turn it up type three class four by changing the jumper. Of course it's open and there's lots of support and documentation on it. All right, let's jump over here and see where we are. It is done and ready for us to start doing some stuff. So I'm gonna give it uh, uh, BC, I'm gonna give it a name, a user account. My name is gonna be BC Yellow. I don't know what it's doing there. Let's try again, BC. Huh, I wonder if it's interfering with my keyboard. Let me move it out of the way. Well, that's odd. I have to keep typing in the window every time. Huh. Well, let me refresh the screen here and see if we get something else. All right, refreshing the screen helps. All right, BC Yellow is gonna be that. And let me go here and add a password and we're gonna create an account. And of course you could always restore from a previous backup. I made a video on doing that before. Okay, and then you can set your location and do all that other stuff. I'm gonna go Fahrenheit pounds because that's where I'm at. I'm gonna choose US dollars for that since that's where I'm at. And next, I do turn on analytics because that helps improve Home Assistant. So I will do that now. There's a whole video I have on the analytics and what they do with it. Devices and services are represented in Home Assistant as Integrations, you can set them up now or do it later from the configuration screen. Here are some things I guess it found within my network. So I could set all of these up right now if I wanted to. Um, let me see if there's anyone I just want to pick to do right now. Um, 
Let's do this one right here. I'm going to add this radio node. It's just a sensor I have in my attic. And I'm going to add a new area called attic. Select it now and finish. And I guess I could do some more here. If I wanted to do all of these, I could. Uh, I could do this Roku here, submit that, give it a location, Let's finish it. And just for the fun of it, let me do one more here. I'm not sure what this does. Oh, it's already added. So you see the check marks are the ones that are already added. And then we can do one more is my office light is a bulb. So we'll just do that in uh, office. Add new area office. And then I will select office from the list here. I thought I would. Let me try to get office. Add area office. And then I will select the area. Hmm. Okay. We will just skip that for now because that didn't work. And then we'll click finish. And now we have the living room Roku, the attic, power supply, and heat sink, the uh, BC yellow, which is this device that we're running it on, the power supply status of the Raspberry Pi, the bulb, which actually turns on and off my bulb and the IP address of my bulb. And we have some stuff down here. We actually have an update. Let me see what we're running on here. Okay, so when I got this uh, a couple of three weeks ago, or when it was shipped, uh, I was, ru was running, uh, it, well, I had 8.1 installed and it's ready for 8.2. So I can go ahead and install that when I have a chance here. And we have notifications. We have discovered new devices on your network. This is the beauty of this too. All of these devices it has now found on my network that I can go ahead and set up straight away without having to do anything else other than to configure them. And then you have all these services available to you already. Anyway, that is uh, from this point on, uh, if you want to do more with Home Assistant, watch my um, Back to the Basics Home Assistant playlist. It covers a bunch of stuff on how to get things set up and running. It talks about some add-ons that I use. I have some top add-ons I talk about in my videos. So peruse my videos on the channel here and dig into to Home Assistant if you're new and just really get into it. It's a lot of fun. You can do a lot with it, with automations and dashboards and controlling things. Uh, and getting insights into what your home is doing uh, from all the way from security to cameras to all of that stuff. So, so I hope it was interesting just to kind of take a quick look at the Home Assistant Yellow and getting it set up and running. As you can see, it is very easy. You plug it in, you let it boot up, and then you find it on your network and just start adding stuff to it. It's uh, going to be an amazing piece of technology. Uh, you'll start seeing more of these out there in the uh, world as they start getting shipped out. So let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments, hit me up on Discord. Um, make sure you subscribe if you're not a subscriber or join the channel if you wanna support what I do here. And we will see you on the next video.